This is the Law of 45, today we're going to be recording another Terraria video. This is a video on how to beat the Terraria boss, Eater of Worlds. The first thing first is how to craft the actual item to summon him. And that is you need uh, rotten chunks, you need 15 of those, and you need 30 vile powders. Uh, powder is made by using the vile mushrooms found in the corrupt biome at a alchemy table. And the rotten chunks are dropped by all the monsters inside of the corrupt biome. With that, you'll come to a demon altar, as is seen here, and you'll make a one uh, one worm food. I have supplies just enough to make one. I already have one though, so there we go for that. For this boss fight, you are gonna want to have your uh, gold helmet, silver armor. If you have gold armor, that's better. But I'm implying that you haven't played too long and that you only have silver armor. Uh, Band of Regeneration is a must for this fight because you will need it because you will have small breaks in between normally. The Cloud in the Bottle and the Rocket Boots are once again another need for this fight because they will allow you to escape him when he's trying to loop around you. Um, after this boss fight, we're assuming that you have defeated the Eye of Cthulhu. If you haven't defeated the Eye of Cthulhu, this is not a boss fight for you because you do want to have the Knight's Bane Sword, which is made out of pure Demonite. You'll need a Knight's Bow. Uh, not not called Knight's Bow, it's called Demon Bow, made from Demon Ore also. These are two weapons that are a must for this fight if you want to survive it and do it multiple times in one area. Uh, sadly, my demolition guy was dead, so I was not able to buy demolition bombs. But the first thing you'll find is that there are orbs in the ground. There are small purple shadow balls. I'm sorry I can't show you one for the purpose of this video. Um, they'll be in small cloves. I think down there there's actually one. Uh, it's very hard for me to go down there though. Maybe just a demon altar. But in the corrupt biome, you'll find dark places covered in this ebbstone, and you'll see purple glowing. If you see a, a circular orb in there, you'll want to go in there and either use TNT to explode it or uh, use your hammer and break it. Uh, your only way to mine this, if you don't have the demonite pickaxe, is to uh, use the bombs and dynamite from the demolition salesman. And that's how you blow up the ebbstone, and then if you do that, you can blow up the core, and that has a chance of spawning you, the Eater of Worlds, or it will land you a meteorite. Those are two useful things, because in this boss battle, as you have the ability to use a phase blade, you will do ten times better than if you have to use his Night Light's Bane. Um, shurikens are also a nice thing to have in this boss fight if you want them. Uh, I don't particularly find them a need, but if you do like shurikens, they are rather cheap to have, and they can be used sufficiently. God dang, that's not the Eater of Worlds, guys, by the way, that's a tiny worm. But, um, you'll want 30 potions only. I don't see a use for any more than 30. If you are using more than 30 for a boss fight of uh, this small scale, when you are having some issues, and you probably shouldn't be fighting the boss. Boss fights in Terraria are actually rather easy, and they shouldn't take much effort at all for the first two. Okay, so before night's over already, just because we've been talking so long, let's go ahead and summon an Eater of Worlds. Okay, for this beginning of the boss fight, we have the Ball of Hurt. When you break orbs, you can get, have a chance of getting a Ball of Hurt. That's what you'll want to break up his original strength. As you can see, it deals large strings of damage to him, which is very useful in the early beginning, because this can take out the whole backside of him before he even gets the chance to hit you once. Now, do you realize he will come crushing in on you from all sides, and he'll try and trap you in a circle and clove. Meaning the best opportunity is to always keep moving and try to get into small clothes that will provide you max damage. If you can get it, try to get your Knight's Bane out and wh whack him a ton. Uh, you will want to use HP pots as needed. I can't tell you the best times, but whatever you do, you don't want to get in the circumstance I had right there where I was stuck inside the worm. Okay, right now I've split them up on one half already. I'm already trying to nail them down with my sword. As you can see in a normal fight, I would have already lost uh, if I had only 400 HP. There you go. First thing down, he's split into two parts now. And as you can see, he's becoming a very looping snake. Uh, there we go. There's another part down. He drops some shadow scales, which will be used for, for making a demonite pickaxe, which will help us in the future boss fights of this battle. I'm using a potion because I already have gone down to half health. Make sure you keep an eye on your health during this boss fight as it is easy to get caught up in the fight. Uh... Try and make sure you confine yourself to a small area. You don't want to be running in large distances just to kill this boss. It shouldn't take much more than this, considering the fact that all I'm doing here is just jumping up and down and going for the main guts where I see him at. 
I'm going to tell you now, guys, you definitely need at least 200 health for this boss battle. I recommend all 400 health points if you can. If you can get more than 400, which I think I may have been special like that. But if you can't get more than 400, don't worry about it. But you need 400, you need healing potions, and you need to have good weapons. As you can see now, it's a pretty easy fight. I just got to finish him off on his tail, like so. Come on, come on, come on. Come at me. There we go. And now we just go like this. And he's almost dead. As you can tell, he splits into many parts. So it's rather hard to kill all parts. Okay, I'm down to 400 health, so I want to quickly boost my health back up. But, Eater of Worlds is about to be defeated. As you, now you can see, there's a small fragment. This basically is the end of the fight. You shouldn't be on your total unguarded, but you should be able to hand the rest of the fight now. Um, as you noticed, I only used two potions in that whole fight, and I was rewarded quite vigorously. This boss fight is best used with full gold armor if you have it. If you don't have it, it's okay not to, but it's best used with full gold armor. Uh, you'll want to make sure that in this fight, you do have some demonite weapons. The demonite bow would have been good if I had gone for a less offensive and more defensive strategy, because one strategy is to run down this corridor here, make a straight line out of the demon uh, ebstone, and run down this corridor, and then back and forth, because then he will be um, forming up and down loops. If you shoot arrows through those, he'll die rather quickly. Um, other than that, you can use your gold bow and gold broadsword, but I highly recommend against it if you want to live. It's a pretty easy boss fight, as you saw. Uh, it just takes a tidbit of skill and time, and make sure you are using Demonite. Like I said, that's a key part of the thing. This boss fight will reward you with Shadow Scales, 34 of them, and Demonite or 47 for this boss. Uh, remember, it is a random amount generated. Uh, my recommendations are continuously knocking out those orbs I was talking about until you do get like a ball of hurt or a meteor to land and get a white phase blade. These are both really nice things to have for this boss fight. If you don't have the ball of hurt, that's a good stage to use the shurikens or your bow. Or if you have the white phase blade, just automatically start using that because the white phase blade, or any for that matter phase blade, will automatically kill him pretty darn easy. I randomly got mine because I was destroying orbs hoping for a, uh, what was it, a second meteor. And thanks to my first meteor, I had a white phase blade. And my white face blade chopped through him. I killed him in two minutes, I believe, with the white face blade. Um, and I was using only like iron and silver armor back then, also, so it wasn't that bad. This is the recommended setup, I uh, would say. All gold is the best, and full demonite weapons and unholy arrows and um, a face blade would be the best recommended weapon setup. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Uh, my next video will probably be about Skeletron or it may be about Meteor events. Uh, it may be about the Goblin Army also depending if I get a go Goblin Army. Uh, I'll probably die in that video once or twice. Uh, other than that guys, have a nice day and uh, I'll see you on the YouTube.